All right. Hey, good morning, guys. Hola, mis amigos. Soy Chicana Fuerte. How are you all? Welcome to this Good Friday with the one and only great producer, Mr. Joe Garcia, along with the love of my life, Rose Fernandez. What's up, homie? Can you hear us? What's up? Yep, I hear you. I hear you guys loud and clear. Hey, baby. What's up, Joe? Hey, man. So welcome to the you know, broadcasting from the beautiful west side of San Antonio, Puro Exit 7 here. Yeah, we're bringing you Pluto Exit Seven. Pluto Exit Seven. We're bringing you another episode of the Alamo City Sportscast, and in the house today, we're we're joined by the one and only, the beautiful Stephanie Mejia, uh, Rick's better half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> way better. better. <laughs> and I was telling her too because they think they think that this is a joke, right? Like us, like hey, we're having some construction in front of the house. Like I told Mike yesterday, right? And I told Steph too. I was like, hey, you might not want to come because it. They like tore up my street. She's like, I don't mind walking. I'll park a block away or whatever. It's like, all right, cool. And she came down. She was walking down the street, man. And she's like, I was like, they, they tore up the street. Like I was a play. Like the yeah. front, of my, the front of the street in front of my house, it's gone. Like half, it's, it's gone. all gone. It's all gone. You can't even get out That's of the wild. park. You can't get out of your driveway right now. You know. And then the cop was being a little rude today too. So fuck that guy. Man, I'm real polite, but. <laughs> You want to come at me sideways? La, the Latina was coming out of her today, Ooh. dude. Yeah, Latina as fuck. And then, and Latina as fuck. With the shirt that says Latina as fuck. Hey, hey, hey. Don't you let us like, know what you got. She's man. She tells me this story, dude. She comes in the studio. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, you're not gonna believe what I got. I'm like, what did you get? She goes, you can't believe what they gave me. Tell us what you got. Okay, so I start off my morning with. You know, my, my children getting up, making breakfast for them, getting them all settled. And I was going to stop by 8 Ball Coffee because I needed to pick up a shirt that they had just dropped. Um, and they're also, I mean, you know, it's Friday. People are still working. And I see this city of, or I see someone working on a sign. A worker. I see a worker yeah. working on a sign. And... I'm like, hey, can I have a sign? <laughs> and I, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still freaking out because it's truly like an amazing gift. And he, he was like, absolutely. He's like, which one do you want? And I was like, I can have more? He's like, no, just one. And I was like, okay, all right, all right. I was like, the one that's on the ground that's already like, I, I was like, I don't know if you're going to throw it away. I was like, but it looks like you guys aren't going to use it. I was like, can I have that one right there? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, but I can't give it to you. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, that's fine with me. Like, let me let me put my car in park. And I went and got it. And um, after I put it in my trunk, I was like, hold up. Does this mean I'm a lifer here now? Because, <laughs> because I have a sign. What sign is it though? What was it? What did it say? South St. Mary's. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. See, that only only she could only pull that off. I guarantee you. Had me had Joe and I walked up to that that dude, he would have been like, get away from me. <laughs> um only, only 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 Steph could pull that off. Oh That's awesome. I, yeah. I was so excited to call Rick. I was like, you'll never believe what happened. I know she called me. She's like, I got this sign, bro. It was hilarious. Uh, but that's, that's awesome. Crazy, so man. yeah, but I'm gonna put like, it up. Why is this guy looking at me? <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm ask for a sign. Yeah, because... she said I'm gonna use that to my benefit. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <Yeah. too. laughs> because who wouldn't? What what right yeah. woman in her mind would not right. have your advantage? Yeah. Like, hey, you already looking at me. Like, what? Are you are you telling me to get that sign because you saw like <laughs> what I was looking at you what you were doing, I mean because like I honestly did look around like I'm really yeah. well aware of my surroundings you know and so yeah I was just like man like what is that banging noise and like yeah like he's over here like banging the sign off of the, the little pole. pole yeah and I was mm -hmm. like oh, okay like that's not a, a normal a normal sound that I hear whenever I come and get my coffee so but then it's the lingering I was like don't don't linger at me <laughs> the lingering. <laughs> hey, I a new shirt, by the way, Steph, check this out. Oh, you did? The Spurs, they just went ahead and released their graphic, right, for the, for the game tonight. I went ahead and reposted that, uh -huh. and it says, I love San Antonio. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I love SA. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the Spurs are going to be playing the Knicks tonight at 7 p.m. at the mm -hmm. Frost Center. You can catch it on yep. Battle Sports. And, of course, you can also go ahead and catch the play-by-play -play on WOAI 1200 AM. Uh, you, you can catch thing? that by the ba the great Bill Shoney. That's it's legit. That's, that's dope right there. It is dope. Yeah. 
I like that. She's showing us the eight I'm ball. I'm showing the eight ball. The shirt. The shirt Love it. Man. Yeah. Look at it, guys. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a nice shirt, man. It's gorgeous. <laughs> that's dope. So dope. So the Spurs tonight, Rick, they're going to wind up playing, right? They're going to play the Knicks. Yep. So if they go ahead mm -hmm. and they get the dub against the Knicks. Is this a possible win streak? Yeah, three, three, right? Um, three in a row. It would be three if, if they got it. Um, so that would be an, a, a streak. It's like a, it's like the gift from a major league, right? Where he's like, we won one. That's called a winning streak, right? It has happened before, um, you know. Uh, but uh, hey, it's possible. I think it's possible, man. They're clicking. Um, you know, we'll see. Hell yeah, man. You know how he menaces. He menaces like, oh no, it's not a streak unless they win three. Yeah, I heard him say that. One, I heard him say that one time. Um, honestly, I, I don't subscribe to that. I mean, I think two in a row is a streak. I mean, you win one, yeah. you win two. I mean, that's. I, I don't know the textbook definition, but I, I would venture to say a streak would be more than one, right? I mean, but. Um, so I, I think I think back to back wins is 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 a streak. It's a small streak. It's the beginning of a streak. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so three is definitely no doubt a streak but he meant as you know as he always does you know he's just trying to find little things to to the nitpick. you know so, yeah of course yeah the other course. thing yeah. that he likes to do is he likes to shit on jeremy sohan dude and i'm like mm -hmm. why are you hating on jeremy man he's yeah he's a good player i like the kid man he comes mm -hmm. out with a lot of energy a lot of spunk yeah. you know and mike's yeah. like oh he he had one good game so that means he's gonna have two bad games in a row well he had <laughs> another good game 17 yeah. points I'm like, maybe the kid's turning the corner, man. He's not known to be a prolific scorer, but he's finding yeah, ways to go ahead and help, you know? So I like that yeah. about the kid. Hopefully he has another good showing out there, can go ahead and dispel the naysayers. But mm -hmm. I like Jeremy Sohan, man. What do you think about him? Yeah, man, I, I love his energy, bro. And like I've said this before, um, it's all about managing expectations, bro. No one, uh, no one's, like you said, no one's saying he's uh, a prolific offensive scorer, scoring threat. Um, but he can get hot, right? He can, you know, um, get get going. Uh, he's always gonna give his all, man. He's always gonna give it all out there, man. You see him I out on the court, dude. He's what twenty years old, man. We gotta remember. We gotta remember, man. I, and I and again, man, I'm not trying to be an apologist. I'm not trying to say let's have patience, but I'm just saying, like, dude's twenty years old, man. And um, you know, there's we're watching March Madness. You know, a lot of those kids are 20, 21, 22, You know, um, you know, back back in the day, he would have been a, a sophomore in, in Baylor still or something like that. Or you know what I mean? So or a junior. Well, we, were but, um, we were making babies, bro. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you know, I was, you know, I was at, uh, you know, I was in Fallujah, you know, when I was twenty years old. But that's that's another story. But um, no, but yeah, like it's just it's just it's it's tough, man. Like. I think this, I don't think this is a new thing. I just feel like because of social media and because of the way we are and the instant gratification that we have now with, with, the, with the social media, Instagram generation, the, I call it like the Kardashian effect. We're like, uh, yeah. gotta get, you gotta get rich now. You gotta, everything has to happen now, right? That, and, and it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm not trying to get too deep, but it's like a societal thing, right? Kids nowadays want to be driving the Benz and the Lexus is right out the gate when it's like, bro, we had our mom's used car as a kid and we were happy for, with that, right? And we yeah. had to earn our way through. Not so all the doors had this match this, they had all the yeah, same color. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 exactly. So the concept I'm trying to get at is like, um, I think this has always happened, but it's just magnified more through social media. Like there's oh, you could yeah. look back at, at the eighties and nineties and, and Jordan and any of the other stars, they've had bad games. I'm not, and I'm not comparing Sohan to Jordan before people jump out. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, like, any any star, any NBA level player had yeah. like horrible games or had times where they looked like they weren't playing well, and it just wasn't as magnified as it is now. Whereas now it's every it's it's one day to the next. One day it's like, oh, Jeremy Sohan's the best thing ever. I, I don't like to get too extreme on one way or the other. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and just because Jeremy Sohan has one good game try to say that he's like a hall of famer like i'm not going that far but i'm also not going to say oh he had one bad game so he's he's crap you know what i mean like if, if we go by that logic then every day every second every minute we're going to be flip-flopping and changing you know what i mean um so here's the thing man let him play out let's look at the totality of of of, of what he does in the season and i think there's more good than bad that's I just me I, I, I mean that that there's just more good than bad that's kind of how simple-minded i'm putting it like there's more good than bad when it comes to jeremy sohan energy yeah. effort defense every once in a while he does go off for 20 or, or more and all that um but you gotta again Kawhi leonard wasn't a prolific scorer either when he first came on the scene Kawhi was 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 a defensive guy and he ended up reaching more offensive 
over time, right? And maybe we have that with Jeremy. Maybe we don't. I, again, I don't know, but we can't we can't tell the tell already. I guess is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, it's too early in his career, man. I think the kid has done a lot since he's yeah. come to the league as far as the evolution of his game, you know? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't understand how the naysayers, like one Mikey Menace, for example, always yeah. have something bad to say, you know? Right, I, right. It would be one of the pieces that the Spurs can keep around, you know, and rebuild uh, around Wemby, you know? <clears throat> of course, I think so. Some help, I, you know? I think, I, I, yeah, I think, and I, this is, I, this is what I say. I think, obviously, we got Wemby. Um, we need another star. We need a Robin for Wemby, right? Mm -hmm. I love Devin. I love Jeremy. But if we slide in another Robin for Wemby and Devin becomes the third guy and Jeremy the fourth guy, wow. Like, like I, I think I think there's something there. You know what I mean? I, and I think that's fair to say. I'm, I'm not – I'm just saying, like, um, it's not going to get done with Devin being the number two and Jeremy being the number three. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, like, I think bringing in another Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, whoever you, you want to – Think of a uh, side Wemby giving some pressure off of Devin to be your third guy, and then Jeremy now could be the fourth. Man, I, I think I think I think that'd be, over, that'd be something. It's over at that point, you know. Mm -hmm. hey, but mm -hmm. speaking of Trey Young, I don't know if you watched it last night, but I was watching the Hawks game, Hawks and Celtics, dude. Mm -hmm. And that one was a really interesting game. That one went into OT, and they saw former Spur Dejounte Murray. He dropped a forty piece, man, on the yeah. Celtics, man. And yeah, I didn't see it. I didn't see it, but I heard, and I didn't. I heard, and I, I saw. I saw that he dropped that, and it's like, yeah. wow, forty. And That's impressive. The thing is, impressive. Dejounte is Dejounte's not really known as being one of those clutch players. You know, mm -hmm. when he was with the Spurs, he wasn't like known as a clutch kind of player in crunch time. Mm -hmm. But since he's over there with the Hawks, and what I saw yesterday, he hit the game winner, dude. You know, he, I mean, mm -hmm. to his credit, he had a hell of a game. You know, with Trey yeah. Young uh, just out on the bench. You know, but. You know, shout out to you, DeJounte, man. He was doing his thing last night. So it was cool to see DeJounte and also former Spur Derek White kind of go at each other. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, look at these guys. They're both playing for, for different teams now, you know, but they're going in different directions. The Hawks are kind of just like trying to get into the play-in. You know, the Celtics, one of the better teams out in the Eastern Conference right now. Mm -hmm. But it's good to see how, how they've, let's say, uh, have elevated their game you know, on the teams that they're at right now. So I was happy, man. I was kind of like proud of these guys. Look at where they came from as San Antonio mm -hmm. Spurs players and look at where they're at now. You know, wish them both the best, man. Let me be looking forward to seeing what uh, Derek White does with uh, the Celtics, man. But if you could have one of these players back, man, I I'd want Derek White back. In this lineup, I mean, his leadership would be instrumental out there and the team would instantly be better, you know. Playing alongside Wemby, now that, that would be something, man. But it is what it is, you know. We 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 got the players and the pieces that we have right now around Wemby. But even though the Spurs have the losing record, you're still things that you can go ahead and look at as a Spurs player and see that this team is getting better. You know, even though that the record might not reflect that, the overall product is getting better. They're being more competitive. They're trying to win these games. You know, it's not like they're going out there and just avidly trying to go ahead and lose. You know, what have you thought about this young team? Oh, oh man, man, we lost go. Rick. He'll come back. <laughs> but let's read some of the 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 comments here. Oh, look at look at Matt Lerma. He puts you can tell Rick is on Twitter a lot because he qualifies everything he says. <laughs> I saw that too. Oh man, Christopher Leha, you cows GMs need to stay quiet and trust Pop in the front office. He okay, says, You're nice. you balding boomers. <laughs> All right. Yeah, my, no. Hey, I think I, I think I lost you for a little bit. My bad, bro. My bad. Hey, you can go ahead and click off of the comment real quick, Steph. Appreciate it. Thank you. You know, I don't hey, think hey, I, hey, hey, there ain't no balding here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, like, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got, you know, I got that fresh fade, bro. You know. Oh, <laughs> 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 hey, but no, I, I think I lost you for a little bit, but I, I yeah. heard the end of your question. But yeah. yeah, but I was gonna say, even with the Spurs and their losing record, I said there's still things that you can take as a Spurs fan. If you're really a, a, a steward of the game and you're really following this team, is that regardless of what the the record is, you can still see that their trajectory is going in the right direction because you can still see that there's some growth there. They're playing better as the you know the season comes to an end. That's something that they can build upon for next year. Now they do need a little bit of help, but as far as the evolution of the Spurs from the beginning of the year to 
now coming at to the end of the season, what have you thought about the the game so far? You know? Yeah, I mean, and and I think um, you know, we we're all on Twitter and we all see everybody going back and forth and everybody with their opinions. Multiple things can be true. You know what I'm saying? There is no one side is right and one side is wrong or whatever. That that's what I think. There's multiple things that can be true. Yes, the Spurs need help. Yes, the Spurs need to make changes. Yes, the Spurs need to do the X, Y, and Z. Yes, I trust what the Spurs are doing and, and I trust their, their trajectory and what's going on, whatever, right? So um, multiple things can be true. But I, yeah, I would say, you know, we all, we all go back to the beginning of the season with the Jeremy Sohan experiment, right? Yeah, Everybody point. was in a, uh, yeah, the point, Jer the point Sohan experiment. Everybody was in an uproar. Um, again, I don't, I don't think it was necessarily ever a thing of like, hey, he's going to be the point guard of the future. I do think it was, hey, I, his, his fluidity of the game seems to be coming to him a little bit, probably because of some of that time playing at point guard, right? Like he's finding some good passes and he's doing a couple of different things off the ball. Um, so I think it was a, it, there was some good that came of it. Um, now, you know, one would argue and say, well, just developing him was hurting the rest of the team, possibly. Uh, um, but I, I think, um, you know, if you take if you take the season in pieces, you know, after the All-Star break, I mean, and again, there's no more victories, but they're rarely getting blown out anymore, right? I mean, I mean, you know, and I, I'm not trying to say like, oh, let's celebrate that they're not getting blown out. I'm, I'm just trying to speak in, in factually. In the beginning of the season, they were getting their ass kicked. Like, like, right? Like, they were just getting hammered and losing oh, no. like bad. Yeah. Um, whereas now, first half of the season didn't happen, and, and all we were going close, you know. Um, so I definitely have seen just in the one year so far a lot of growth and evolution. And, he, and obviously with Wamby, I mean, he's, you know, he's doing his thing. But um, there is positive go going forward. I mean, and, you know, so again, like I said, multiple things can be true. I'm, I'm positive of what they have going forward. But there do need to be some eight, um, moves in the offseason. You know, you could you could think those two things, you know what I mean? Like, people act like it's one or the other. Like, if, if you think that the Spurs need to make moves in the offseason, well, then you I think we're losing Rick again, man. It's a Wi-Fi. No, it's the all those planes um, going over his office. <laughs> yeah. It's all the, what do you call it, the radar and all that stuff that they got in him. It's probably messing up his Wi-Fi. Right, well, but look, we got some comments in, in here coming from uh, Tavarius. He says, get Wemby some bucket getters around him. Yeah, no lies detected there, man. Yeah. They need somebody that can drop some, some buckets, you know, and go ahead and uh, create their own offense. And what else does he say? Has anyone heard or seen the GM? Where is Brian Wright? That's a good question. Maybe Brian Wright's behind the scenes trying to make some things happen as the season comes to a close here. The, the grind don't stop, so they have to go ahead and get some some talent to surround Wemby. Hopefully, they can make some moves. I don't know if they're going to wind up getting the pick they actually want in this year's uh, draft. But, I mean, we can we can see where the where the ping pong balls will fall. Absolutely. I mean, I would like to see another seven footer play out there along Wemby, you know, but we'll see what what happens with this NBA draft that's up and coming. If the Spurs don't get a high pick, let's say they wind up getting seven or eight. Let's see what they wind up doing with that. You know, I don't know if they can go ahead and make a, a trade that might benefit the team and trade away that seventh pick uh, with somebody else who might be interested in, in making a deal. We'll see what happens, because I was saying uh, when you were out, out of here. Uh, for a quick second here, Rick um, Tavarius was saying, has anyone heard or seen GM, the GM Brian Wright? Where is he? I'm like, hey, man, <laughs> behind the scenes trying to make some things happen, getting ready for the NBA draft because the grind don't stop and they got to go ahead and yeah. get around Wemby with some 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 players. And he was saying they need some bucket getters, you know? Oh, oh, absolutely. Matt, Matt Lerma saying, let's go get Herb Jones. He goes, word on the streets is Sar." Don't want to play with Wemby. Uh, we'll see, man. They always spend a lot of narratives out here. We don't know if there's any truth to that. There's, sometimes there's a lot of uh, writers that just like to go ahead and spin false narratives out there to go ahead and get clickbait. You know, let's go ahead yeah, and catch yeah. a headline with no substance behind it. You know, it's like if you don't you don't hear it from the horse's mouth, basically, they, I, I see it as 
There's nothing more than that. Just a bunch of clickbait. But we'll see what happens with the Spurs as they get closer uh, to the NBA NBA draft and what they do and where the ping pong balls will fall as they may. And see if yeah, the it's wind up getting a high pick, man. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting offseason. You know, if the Spurs, I mean, I think the Spurs, <laughs> with their record, they should get a pretty high pick. Um, the Toronto pick is still up in the air. You know, if they, if they, they, they tanking hard, bro. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. If, if there was a way to get that one, that'd be great, right? Because it'd be like maybe like a, a three and a six or seven yeah, or ish. But um, yeah, um, either way, again, the, the chips are going to fall where they fall, right? You can't control what Toronto's doing. Um, but um, that pick may come down the road or who, whatever, who knows. But some, some something's going to have to be done, right? Whether a, a trade or um, a free agency, see what the draft brings. Um, I mean, I think, um, I think, I think they can only get better. You know, yeah. put, putting people around Wemby. Yeah, true enough. But again, Spurs play the Knicks tonight. Tip off at 7 p.m. Probably closer to 7:10, I would think, after they finish doing all the, you know, introductions and whatnot. So we're yeah. gonna be watching that one for sure. But we're gonna go ahead and transition here. Uh, and you know what, Chicana Fuerte, we're gonna be talking a little bit about boxing. So if you know we're gonna be talking about boxing, yeah. you got to go to the videos off to the right side there. And you got to play that intro for my boy. <laughs> ah, you see that, dude? That's yeah. that <laughs> that we got. I love it. it. Hey, so we're gonna be talking about some boxing, man. We got a I big mean, weekend. Big weekend. Big weekend. Yeah, yeah. We got some ladies fighting, man. We didn't have Senisa and Vale. You yep. know, be happy mm-hmm. tonight, March the 29th. You know, yeah, top today? boxing, mm-hmm. you can watch that on ESPN Plus. So I was watching the weigh-in right now, you know, from yesterday. They're playing the footage. Man, both mm-hmm. ladies look cut, dude. They, they're ready mm-hmm. for this fight, man. What do you can tell us about yeah. the fighters? Yeah, man. So you got, you know, super bad Estrada, man, out of out here, out of East L.A. She's a beast, man. If you've never seen her fight, she brings it, man. She brings the action, 25-0, and 0, um, nine knockouts. Um you know, she's got the WBA, WBC, and ring belt. So so this is for all the belts and the minimum weight. Uh, uh, Vaya also has two belts. So she's no scrub either, man. 30 and two, you know, also with nine knockouts from Costa Rica. She's, she's a tough fighter, man. Um, this is going to be a good one, you know. And I'll tell you what, these ladies are starting to bring it on the fights. Like, like they, they, are, they are making a movement to get the, you know, because if you know about boxing, the, the women's fights used to be uh, – shorter rounds shorter um you know like instead of 10 round fights it was 12 round or i'm sorry instead of 12 it was 10 round championship fights and yeah. instead of three minute rounds it was like two minute rounds stuff like that they want eat they want their rounds equal as the men's they want three minute rounds you know what i mean they want they don't want it to be hey this for uh, the women's world title it's, it's a world title fight period right so these ladies are bringing it and uh, su- uh super bad style is fun to watch man this is going to be a big one this is on the undercard of uh, oscar valdez and liam wilson on uh, tonight on ESPN out of, out of, out in Phoenix or yeah out of the Glendale area, but um it's gonna be good man it's gonna be a good one don't don't miss this one. You know the one thing that I love the most about her is how like she she's she actually reminds me of like a calmer uh, Mayweather if I'm being uh, honest okay because man like she hasn't lost right but have you seen no, this twenty five and up she They're and cut, she walks a, no she mm-hmm. walks around yeah. like that she stays ready and. Yeah. And honestly, like every opponent that she's had, oh, like you know it's gonna be over really, <laughs> really fast. She brings it, man. Yes. And like, mm-hmm. and another thing too is that like she's in her 30s. So that's mm-hmm. extremely impressive. Yeah, yeah. The, the shape that she's in. I mean, it's impressive. Yeah. I mean, these ladies, they ain't no body fat there, you know, mm-hmm. at all. Yeah, yeah. They, no. they could throw she's down with gorgeous. some of these men. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Both. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 and that, yeah, I mean, again, yeah, it doesn't hurt that they're not bad looking, and and but don't get that, don't let it twist, don't fool you, like they can throw down, they can fight, man, and again, you got, you know, so many uh, 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 female fighters who are who are making a stamp on on the game, you know, and uh, um, you know, Michaela Meyer and 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 uh, and and Clarissa Shields, and you could go on and on. There, there's some good fighters out there that are bringing it. Um, so they're fun to watch. They're really fun to watch. You know, some people kind of like, oh, it's women's boxing. No, nah, don't don't get it twisted. It's boxing. I, I'll tell you, some of the best fights I've seen have been women fights. You know, mm-hmm. um, so they they're trying to, you know, just like in the you know, just like in in all sports, right? You know, a lot of uh, equality in women's sports, and they're trying to say, hey, 
we, we want we're here too you know while, while you know we don't you don't have to put the asterisk of women's boxing like it's boxing you know what i mean like like that that's what it is you know and, and these ladies will throw it down uh, yeah i mean we also have some other fights that are going to be occurring you know we have the top ranked boxing and they have their card going on uh tonight on espn plus i believe the tip off is going to be around 11 p.m eastern it's kind of late yeah it's a little bit late um yeah yeah, yeah. it's because it's out here in the west coast it's out here in uh arizona yeah so, so they don't um, have uh, what do you call it daylight savings time so over there <laughs> closer to eight o'clock or something like that 7 p.m yeah. and yeah. it's going to be starting around 10 p.m central standard time for us so definitely a good night of boxing you know you can go yeah ahead. man i mean oscar oscar valdez you know is, is headlining that card um yeah and he's a warrior. Right? Have, you, have you seen him, man? That dude's a warrior, right? Uh, he's uh, 31 and two. Um, you know, his two losses are only to Shakur. Take a hit. Yeah, yeah. His only loss is Shakur Stevenson and, and, and Emmanuel Navarrete. You know what I'm saying? So right. those are two, uh, uh, you know, two world class fighters. So Oscar Valdez was an Olympian in 2008 and 2012. I mean, the dude from Mexico, um, the dude's a warrior. Have you ever seen him fight? He's a blood and guts guy. He's, he's cut from the like, gaddy cloth you know and the, and those guys where he will just go to war um and um so the liam wilson the guy he's fighting he's actually pretty interesting because um he's kind of unheralded i mean he's only like 13 wins and two losses but um he took navarrete uh re his last fight he dropped him in the fourth round and you know made it a tough fight and then eventually navarrete stopped him but that kid from australia is tough liam wilson is tough so his record kind of looks like oh he's 13 and two seven knockouts but you know, Navarrete, the, the guy that beat Valdez, um, Wilson took him to a tough fight. So it's going to be a good fight. Um, you know, they're fighting for the WBO belt that Navarrete is possibly relinquishing to go up to 135. So it's it's a world title fight. Yeah, man. So another good weekend of fights here. And we also have another day of fights. So this is today. This is Friday night. Yeah, these are today. Yeah, the Valdez and the, and the super bad style is tonight. That's tonight, man. And then you got some other fights that are going to be occurring. And this one's going to be Amazon Prime's pay per view. This is exciting. That's first, exciting. first, first ever, first ever Amazon Prime pay per view. That's a big yeah. deal. It it's is a big, a big deal for new network. Yeah, especially you know with Amazon Prime now getting into the fray with sports and whatnot, mm -hmm. boxing mm -hmm. that that's going to draw in the viewership, man. Especially yeah. with the pay per view. So this is going to be something that we're going to be watching, man. Tell us about this one, dude. Oh, this is a big one. This I'm excited about this one. I cannot wait for That's tomorrow good, night dude. and and this one, right? So again, one, it's Amazon Prime. It's the first ever new network. It's exciting. Um, and then you got Roly Romero and Isaac Pitbull Cruz. That's gonna be a war. That's gonna be a good one. Um, good you know, it was a, the, the headline was originally Tim Zhu and and um, Keith Thurman. Yeah, Keith Thurman got hurt, pulled out with a bicep injury. But uh, Sebastian Fondura is the replacement, who's a Pretty damn good last minute replacement, let me tell you. But uh, I'm I'm excited about the Roly and and Cruz. Um, you know that's gonna be a a, a good one. Uh, you got Roly. Um, if you've never seen him, man, the dude's a character. The guy likes to talk a lot. You know, he's got a Chihuahua with him, and he, he they have these um they they have these things on on Amazon Prime called uh I think it's called Behind the Gloves, Behind the Rope, something. It's kind of like a 24 seven or all access, you know, where you can watch their training camps and everything. So it's pretty, it's pretty good. But, um, yeah, I mean, Roly a 15 and one, his one loss is to tank Davis. Um, no shame there. Um, and then Pitbull Cruz also a loss to tank Davis, but Pitbull Cruz took Davis to a, a very, very tough decision. If, if you remember that fight, Pitbull yeah. Cruz probably gave tank one of his hardest fights. Um, it was one of those 115, 113, pretty close wins for, 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 uh, tank um and uh Pip yeah yeah man so it's gonna be good man you got you know like i said the the interesting thing is gonna be the height and and, and reach advantage because you got roly you know 5 8 68 inch reach where with uh cruz is 5 4 63 inch reach he's a small dude but he's compact right he's got like that tyson in him you know yeah so i i do like these fights man they're interesting the cards are interesting to me especially with that mm -hmm. amazon pay-per-view premiere yeah you know yep. boxing match that they have coming out what a way to get everybody interested in and in, in watching what's going to be happening smart, on man. amazon prime smart man yeah. put together a good a good card mm -hmm. and you're going to get the viewership in there man the the one thing that i hate is when you have the top of the card stacked you know mm -hmm. you're going to be fighting for titles or whatnot and usually it's one two you know you're going to have either yeah. uh two title defenses on the card sometimes you might have three 
but usually if it's three, it's going to be like the featherweights, like, you know, the, mm -hmm. the lighter weight division. But I like that when they go ahead and stack the card, even though they might have fights that some people are saying, oh, it's meaningless. Nothing's meaningless. Yeah. I mean, these guys mm -hmm. are fighting because mm -hmm. they want to go ahead and get on the map. They want the opportunities mm -hmm. to get that paycheck and the opportunities to go ahead and fight for a title. All these fights mean something. All these guys are out there fighting for something. So it's it's dumb to me when people say, oh, it's a meaningless fight. It means nothing. That's dumb. That's stupid talk. It, it, it they all mean something, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, and, and you're right, man. This card is good, right? You got again. You got the main event, and we could talk about it a little bit later. But you got Tim Zhu, who's a beast. Um, again against Fandora, six five. Sebastian Fandora, six five, which is pretty unheard of for boxing. Like six five, you know, one hundred and fifty four pounder. He he's 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 pretty tall, right? If you ever see him in the ring, it's pretty in interesting seeing how tall he is. Um, for a boxer, but um. You know, you got that, and then of course the Roly Pit Bull, and then you got um like Irislandi Ladas on that undercard, who's a very accomplished champion um from Cuba. You got Brian Mendoza, who actually fought both Zoo and 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 Fandura. Um, actually, Fandura's only loss was an upset to Brian Mendoza, and then he uh, took uh Zoo to a distance. So Brian Mendoza's on that undercard. So yeah, the, the cards are good, man. So th this is one of those fights where you know, for me, like I, whenever we order fights. You know, I watch all the undercard fights, right? Like, like you know, a lot of people, you know, when you have gatherings at your house, you have people yeah. come over. Some people just want to watch the big main fight, and I get that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I remember when we'd get the like Mayweather's and the Pacquiao fights, and the Del even going back to De La Hoya Chavez. Um, you know, when I was a kid, but a lot of people gather for the main fight, yeah. bro. The very first fight, I'm sitting there. I got, I got my seat. Mm -hmm. I got what I got. I'm, I'm there. I'm watching the the deep undercard, man. Like I'm watching all those undercards. You know, hey, some uh, of the I remember card fights are are elite, dude. They put on yeah, 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 yeah. Funny story, man. I remember one time when I was stationed in North Carolina. Um, a buddy of mine invited me to uh, to watch a fight, and I, I think it was a. Uh, Mayweather, it was one of the Mayweather Madonna fights, if I'm not mistaken. And so my buddy's like, hey man, come come through and watch the fight. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, I'll be honest, I, I kind of, I'd rather have it at my house because I like to kind of just have yeah, sure. like my thing and I know what's going on, whatever. So I go to my boy's house to watch this fight. Well, they, they're not watching the undercard, right? Like, like the undercards are on already, you know? And, and I'm like, Hey. Right, undercards, <laughs> undercards about to start. Yeah, yeah. You know, I show up early to yeah. watch the undercards. You know, got my beer, got everything right. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'm like, all right, undercards about to start. I sit down, you know, and everyone's just doing something else, and they're watching. Like, I can't remember what it was, but they're watching something else, and I'm they're like, like boxing, yeah, yeah. I'm like. So, you know, and it's not my house, right? So I can't, I, I can't be like, give me the remote, you know. So, but I'm just kind of like, um. Are y'all gonna put all the fights or like what's going on? Yeah, like, what, what's somewhere up? Else. <laughs> yeah, like like do I gotta leave? Like like what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? That's also and, 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 now too to be like, hey, the manners. <laughs> no, to go and get it done. He's like, hey, go oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. In she that situation, I would give her the like, hey, you need to like you know tell these people because I you know so it was just funny because yeah they weren't into watching the undercards they were gonna just watch the main fight you know so i told my boy i was like hey dog like i'm not trying to be an asshole you know but like i really want to watch the undercards like if you could put it you on, put like, on or it, you know <laughs> yeah man yeah that and then uh another time i remember a while back long this was a long time ago actually um there was some fight tech on hbo or something and a buddy of mine had a like a party or something at his house and i asked him do you have hbo you know what I mean? This was back in the like cable days. Like, this was like yeah. like a while back. So, you know, I was like, do you have HBO, right? And he's like, yeah, 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 I got it. Like, no problem, no big deal. I'm like, cool. So it wasn't like a gathering for the fight. It was just a gathering for something else. And yeah. I was just like, hey, as long as you have HBO, I can turn it on and watch it, whatever. So I'm like, cool, you know, we go and, uh, bruh, get there, time, all like, oh, I'm gonna go don't have HBO. And I'm like, Oh my God, you know, and I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me, bro. So when like, I would always, whenever there was a gathering or something going on and there was a fight, um, I would always ask like, Hey, do you guys get HBO? Do you guys have showtime? Like I, I was trying to like maneuver. Cause I just, yeah. I, I hate What's all that, move? man, but what's the know? move, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Anxiety spikes. Hey, for real. Yeah. Hey, it's, you know, he likes, he's a steward of, of, of boxing. He likes watching mm -hmm. the fights just like I do. And my brother in law is the same way. Like when we watch yeah. the fight, we watch the fight, you know, the yeah. undercards, everything. Yeah. We're locked yeah. in because it's like people don't understand that even if it's an undercard, there's moves being made there. They're, these guys yeah, are yeah. fighting for something. 
you know, yeah. for opportunities. So that's the one thing that I pay really close attention to because they're like, oh, this fighter's nobody. He mm -hmm. that's a nobody might be somebody. Fighting. Yeah, everybody was a nobody. Yeah. Everybody was a nobody at one point. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was a nobody. Now other fighters come in, you know, with a lot more prestige if they come out of the Olympics or whatever the case may be. But yeah, everybody was a nobody at one point, right? So yeah, like watching these guys that are like you said, I like what you said, where no fight is meaningless. Like I mean. A, a guy starting a pro career one and oh that 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 is huge you know for for him and and him or her and their and career going forward their families i mean they're out there fighting of course of course family. man yeah 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 man you step in the ring man you step to those ropes like you're literally putting your life on the line you know you don't you don't play boxing you know no 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 disrespect to any other sport you know all the all sports are difficult in their own right right even you know golf or or you know uh curling or badminton or whatever I, I, every sport has its own challenges i'll give you that but you don't play boxing like there are very few sports where you're literally risking your life every time you go in there you know what i'm saying like so you get in that ring and you're taking punches to the head you know um you could lose your life in that ring you know and unfortunately many have yeah we've so, seen that yeah. happen dude and, and like I've... the cool thing too is like whenever we do go to boxing events and we're just walking around you know, like in Vegas, and this one's like, hey, this is like an up and comer. And Rick will go up to him and he'll be like, hey, like, what's, what's up? up? And yeah. The kids yeah. Are like, oh, man, yeah. you know who I am? Like, this is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, like, no, for sure. Rick, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. No, yeah, funny story. I was uh, years ago, it was a Canelo Mayweather press conference um, yeah. where I got, and that's where I got those Mayweather gloves signed um, from Floyd. Uh, it was it was in DC and, uh, uh tank was there and it was when he was first starting like nobody knew who he was and um he was with a heavyweight uh, seth mitchell out of out of baltimore who who was a, a kind of a, a up and coming back then and uh seth mitchell was talking to people and tank was kind of just hanging around next to him and i didn't know who he was and i walked and i and i but i could tell he was a fighter you know so i, so I walked up to him i said hey man like like you're a fighter or whatever he's like yeah yeah i'm three and oh like i'm coming up and whatever and i was like oh that's cool you know so and i took a picture with him and I was like, hey, man, you might be world champ one day. Like, so I better take a picture with you now kind of thing, right? So we took a picture together. He was super cool. Um, I, I don't even, I don't know where that picture is. I think it's on like an old phone or an old camera that I don't even have anymore. And I, I, I hate that I can't find that picture. But it was a very young Tank Davis at 3-0, um, 2014, I want to say, um, during the Canelo Mayweather um, press conference. But um, yeah, like you, like like Steph said, man, you never know who these, these, these gay, you know, they're coming up. They're up and comers, man. Um, you know, you got to support these guys, you know. I actually met Tank um, at the really? AT&T Stadium <laughs> whenever wow. um, I went to go watch um, Mikey Garcia. And Wow, that's, oh man, that's bad. Watched? I should have taken a picture. Well, here's the thing is that I don't take pictures, as everybody ah. knows. <laughs> um, but someone else took a picture with him. And it's just funny because the same thing was like I, I noticed and yeah. like it was during COVID and everything. So like everybody had like all the masks mask on, on and yeah. stuff. And I was like, hold up. And it is because like, you know, like they're they're walking around with all these chains and stuff. And I was like, I know exactly who that is. <laughs> and yeah, I was just like, hey, that's badass. Hey, but you, you know, it's funny. It, real, well, I'm sorry. One more story before I know you. Uh, she's talked about like not taking pictures. Um, when we were in Vegas, uh, we saw David Morel, who's a. Uh, Pretty, he's another big uh, fighter coming up, um, and uh, I walked up to him and took a picture with him and everything like that. And he was like, "Expect." He was like, "Do you want a picture to Steph?" She's like, "No, I'm good." And he was like, "What the hell?" Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny. Like, like, it, it was, yeah. he, like, he was like, he was like, he was like offended that she didn't want a picture with him. You know, uh, <laughs> it, it's so funny because like we're we're all we're we're dressed up, yeah. you know, because like. That that was the night of the fight, and it was Tank and Ryan Garcia fight, and, yeah, and, yeah. and we're we're walking around with like you know our half pours of Moet, you know we're, we're <laughs> yeah yeah in Vegas, yeah. and this one's just like you you guys know videographer. I what I see when I get inspired, I just I just start going, and whenever Rick's like, hey, like take a picture, like I already know what to do, you know, and <laughs> like I'm there. And and the guy's like, oh, like we're like, you know, Rick's telling me, you know, thank you, and you know, like, you know, good luck in your future, yeah, yeah. like, you know, real cool. And then he's like, oh, well, does she want a picture? And I was like, I I'm on. I feel so bad because like, imagine like I'm on my phone, I got a bottle of Moet in my hand, and I'm like, no, I'm good. We got his. And that's whenever Rick was just like, <laughs> oh man. And then I even thought just like, was that rude? <laughs> I don't think it was rude, but and she's like, no, I'm good. I'm good though. I'm good. <laughs> we got his picture. We're 
we're we're we're good. We're solid. We're Damn. golden. It's like and I that. don't do it. I don't do it out of just like oh I'm better than you. like I just I just don't want to take a picture. Yeah, she likes to be behind the scenes. She likes yeah. to be behind the scenes. Um, she, hey, real quick, real real quick, I'm looking I'm looking at the chat and we got yeah. we got DA Gaming saying having dinner while watching these guys in Dubai. Dubai. That's awesome. That's Hell pretty yeah, awesome. Dude. I love that. I wonder um, if hey, anyone working there. I'll tell you what, Dubai is amazing. I've I've told oh Steph God. this. I've, I've I went to Dubai a couple of times. And um, once I was there for about six weeks, I tell I tell I tell Dubai, I tell Steph all the time, if I could live one place anywhere other than the US, it'd be Dubai. Dubai is amazing. Um, yeah, it, it's super clean, super, you know, no crime. Like, there's a lot of business out there, man. There's a lot of Europeans and Americans out there doing a lot of business. So, GA Gaming, I, I got to get with you. Uh, we we, we got to talk because uh, I would love to find my way back that way in Dubai. Check out what Matt Lerma says. He says, so we're going to make a Paris group trip next season or what? It's going to be poodles in Paris. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, hey, I will, you know what? You know what? There's, there, there's very few. There's very few. There's very few times that 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 Jimenez comes up with a good hashtag or something good. Yes, I completely poodles, forgot poodles about in that. Paris. I, I'll, 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 yeah. Can you imagine a group of us going yeah, out poodles, to that? Poodles. poodles in Paris is definitely a good one. Poodles yeah. in Paris, it'd be like, what the hell does that mean? Is it? If you gotta ask, oh, man. you don't know, man. It's, it's the next. That'd be, that'd be so awesome. It's a Latino thing. But man, if we go out there, we you know we go out there with stacking cups and all that, dude. Oh, we, bro, we bring. Oh, that would be that would be epic. That would be epic to be stacking get, cups in Paris. We're yeah. get, we'll, we, we'll, 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 we'll make our Eiffel Tower out of, out of cups <laughs> out of in cups. Paris. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. We'll be so be smashed. Gonna Who's gonna have shirt. the biggest stack of cups? I mean, nobody's gonna be right. Oh man, hey, Come we on. we yeah we don't we don't need an international <laughs> incident, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, man, we, we don't. We definitely. We <laughs> I mean, go out there. We start making all this noise and we see Wemby will probably come over and be like oh, yeah, oh, that'd be so awesome that'd be so cool though honestly like I think that's so cool that they're playing out there in Paris um there, there's a website or there's a NBA experiences where you can go and um sign up and they'll send you like info about the Paris ex game I mean it, it, it's all the different you know they play in Abu Dhabi and they all those experiences that they have so there's a website and I went to it because they don't have the information yet like it just says NBA Paris to be determined. I mean, we know that it's going to be the Spurs and all that, but they mm -hmm. don't have like the dates yet or anything like that. But you could sign up for like a, like a, like a list, like a, like a, they'll email you info, right? So if you, if anyone's interested, like you should sign up. I signed up for it just to be, I'm curious as to the dates and yeah. the packages yeah. that they have and all that. Yeah. yeah. If we go over there, Steph's going to be the one that have us all refined, right? She's going to take oh, us yeah. to know where the nice places are to eat, That's, where the nice yeah, wine yeah. is at and everything. The nice wine, the nice if champagne. You know what, dude, we don't yeah, get it. Yeah. We'd be drinking beer the whole time. Oh, bro. Yeah. No, I'm gonna have, I'm, I'm, no we, we, we're going to be on we're going to be on that champagne high because. Oh, OK. Yeah. Like, that is where it is. That, that That's the only place. That you can, can, but you, can you imagine going there? Paris is one of these cities that's like on my bucket list. You know, yeah, in Paris? Mine too. Mine too. yeah, I haven't, I haven't, yeah, I have not been to Paris. That's one place I definitely haven't been. And, um, that's definitely a bucket list. Hey, the, those people, yeah. they're, they're a vibe, bro, man. They start drinking early, mm. man. I was like, I oh, yeah, people, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. no, Europeans, man. Like, yeah, I've been, I've been lucky enough to go to like Spain and Italy and Greece, and Europeans, man, they could drink, you know, and like you said, they start early and they like know how to do it, you know what I mean? Like, they start <laughs> early, they chill, they don't get crazy. Um, for the most part, happening. for the most part, yeah. Um, I'll tell you one of the craziest drinkers, uh, British folks, and British and, and Aussies, man. I, I had um, some time to work with some British tankers when I was in tanks back in my old days. Um, and those Brits could drink, bro. Those Brits oh, can throw yeah. it down. And, uh, and the Aussies, bro. Oh. Aussies, I also work with some Australian um, um, Marines. And those guys can drink, man. You know, yeah, so girl, damn, she's from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our, our, yeah, yeah, our, our, yeah. Dude, oh, I don't even know totally. how you all fit in those little tanks, dude. Like when I worked at Kelly, oh, we had equipment and mm -hmm. all that, dude. Like people don't know. Like when you get in those tanks, dude, they're like cramped as hell, dude. It's. Bad. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, man. Um, and I don't know if I ever told Steph this story, but I remember the first time because I joined the Marine Corps in two thousand and three, and I originally was working in tanks and, uh. The school was at Fort Knox, Kentucky. It was like an army school. And so they send you, you know, I'm, I'm just done with boot camp and all that yeah. stuff. And I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. so they send you to the, to the tank school in Fort Knox, Kentucky. And yeah, like I remember the first time I got in, inside the tank, I was like, 
about to hyperventilate. Like I was like, I can't do this. Like I was like, like, like I, I can't breathe. Like, cause I'm inside a tank and I'm telling like my sergeant, you know, I'm like a private, you know, I'm telling my sergeant, like, like I can't do this. I gotta get out of here. He's like, Shut up. you know, like, like get in there, you know, and all that. And I'm just like, I was like, I was, I was like, I want to quit. Like Dude, I was like, you're I in there with like two like, other people. Like, there's no way, you know? Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's three of you total. There's three of you total inside the turret. Yeah. And then and then there's one driver that's a little bit off to his own. And he's off by himself. Yep. He's in like a little compartment, right? So there's yep. one driver, and then there's three guys inside that spinning turret part of the tank. And um somebody yeah, has man, to the first load skills, you know? Yep, yep. Loading. Yeah, you got a guy loading, you got a guy shooting, and then you got the tank commander that's kind of on top watching everything. Yep. And um, I've done all those positions, man. And I, and you know what's crazy though? Once you get comfortable in there you realize that there's a lot more room than you think, right? Like people find little that. nooks and crannies yeah. that put your, your snacks and this and that, and you know, whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, it's, it's kind of wild, man. You know, and I, I was out there and I, in, in Iraq and stuff inside the tank and like, it, it's, um, it's surreal. Like think, like thinking about it now, like I was like 19, 20, 21. And like now, you know, I'm looking back, like that's crazy. Like that's insane. You know what I mean? Um, but, um, you do start to find more little space, but yeah, the first time I got in there, I wanted to tap out. I, I was yeah. like, I can't do this. I was like, I can't. I was like, I can't do this. Like, I swear. Like, I was like, I, I can't do this. Like, I, there's no way, you know. And luckily, my sergeant kind of put a put a boot in my ass and was like, like, nah, you're doing it, you know. And so, you know, 20 years later, yeah, but <laughs> like he, he wasn't gonna let you quit and tap out. No, 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 no. That's good. But that's cool. That's but yeah, cool. man. Uh, um, sharing. Yeah. Hey, but I was yeah. gonna say, man, I'm gonna be going to cover this fight tomorrow. Uh, yeah, at arena. So this mm. is EMP at Desi Martinez pro pro promotions uh, that they're going to be putting out there at Techport Arena here in San Antonio. So they had the weigh-ins or the fan experience was yesterday. The weigh-ins are going to be happening today at 1 p.m. And I believe these are bo both events are going to be at the Smoke Sky Bar. So mm -hmm. if you want to check out the weigh-in, it's going to happen from 1 to 1.30. Well, the doors open at 1. The weigh-ins happen at 1.30. And then the fight uh, that's going to be happening on Saturday, which is a March 30th tomorrow. The doors open at 5 p.m. The main event, it gets started at 7. I got media credentials to be out there to cover this match. I'll be out there with my boy, Big Poppy, Brandon Medina. I wish you could be here with us, homie, man. This kind of just sprung out of nowhere for us. But uh, definitely on the next one, we're yeah. going to you know with advance notice so we can make it happen, dude. Because, I mean, if anybody deserves to be here with those media credentials covering boxing is going to be you because you're the biggest fan i know you know oh man i would love that man and that's awesome for you guys to be out there man you and 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 brandon um i know jesse james leha uh, a world champion yeah. two-time world champion legend in san antonio is going to be there um and the fight. And, yep he's going to be calling the fights um and again we go back to what we were talking about um young up-and-comers these are these are no names. These are people that nobody knows. But this is where they start. This is where you earn your stripes. This is where you cut your teeth. So that's awesome that San Antonio and and um the 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 productions are putting things together for these fights. Man, these are local fighters. They they were all you know amateur standouts. You know within the Texas circuit. Um, you know it's like it's just like um you know it's like any other sport where you know not everybody is a is a, is a number one draft pick you know what i mean that that, that goes into the nba with all this you know it's like an undrafted guy right that's like paid his dues and that, that's how it is with these fighters man like not everybody's going to be an olympian not everybody has those you know ability or the you know the just the opportunities or whatever so these young kids are fighting man and a lot you know and they're coming up um and San Antonio has always been a hotbed for boxing, man. I'm telling you, going back to the Jesse James Leha days, John Michael Johnson, all those guys. So I'm I'm excited that you're gonna be out there, bro. And yeah, next time I would love to come out there and watch some fights. I mean, we went, Steph and I went to some fights at the Shrine a, 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 a while back. Oh, um, and uh, Rob, Robert Gar Robert Garcia had 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 fighters there. You know, legendary trainer Robert Garcia, man, has you know that goes to show you like robert garcia trains world level fighters in in saudi and he's over there with anthony he was with Anthony joshua back then and all this stuff and then he's in a small little arena in san antonio with the kid that's three and l you yeah. know like like I, I mean like that 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 just goes to show you like like you said it's a process there is no there's this is a meaningless fight mm -hmm. like you know what i mean like these all matter so that's that's exciting that that they're doing that in san antonio because yeah, um, you're watching uh these fighters and their careers taking off you know and like we said you know years down the line you see them fighting for a title they're gonna be like hey man yeah. i remember this one time i was at the tech port arena and i saw yeah. this fight and there was something special about it 
Because yeah, you can tell sure. sometimes when you're watching these fighters and they're like, oh, oh yeah, nobody's. And you're watching them and you're like, dude, their technique, mm -hmm. they're a special fighter. You know, even like mm -hmm. you can tell when they're in the ring and that boxing IQ is high. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, Damn, dude. These guys, this yeah. guy pick this uh, other Yeah. Guy. You know, I'll tell uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, man, and it's funny you say that because I, I truly believe that, and I'll even go a step further where you could kind of see something sometimes uh, in their ring walk and kind of just the way they come out, you know you're... what I mean? Like like there's yeah, their demeanor, like like there's something right about it from the their gear that they're wearing. I mean, I'm telling you, man, it's just it's just something innate that you why you see somebody, you're like, Yeah, that 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 kid's gonna be something, you know. And like I said, I've I've I will even like when I used to box as a kid, you see it in the gym. And and and, and yeah. you see gyms. There's you see these in gyms all over. You, you young kids. Again, it's just like seeing a, a prospect, a, a football or a basketball, or whatever, as a kid, and you're like, man, that that kid's got something a lot different than everybody else. It's the same thing. You walk into a boxing gym and you'll see some of these kids, and you're like, man, like like that kid is 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 special, you know. And, and um, yeah, that's really cool that that you guys are doing that. But um, but yeah, again, back to the the card, man, Tim Zoo. Uh, you know, a, a, I don't know if folks remember Kashi Zhu. He was a, a fighter in the 90s. That's his That's his son. Um, Kashi Zhu had a, a fight with Zab Judo where he dropped him in two rounds. And I don't know right. if you remember that, where Zab fell everywhere. And then he started trying to fight everybody and almost created a ride in the ring. Remember that, Zab <laughs> Judo? Yeah, that, yeah, Kashi Zhu is, is Tim Zhu's dad, the one that did that. So uh, the kid's got it in his blood, man. The kid's got it in his in his veins. Um, he's 24-0, 17 knockouts. Um, you know his record. He's he he his. You know he has guys on his resume like Taro Gouche, who was an Olympian, solid guy. Tony Harrison, solid fighters, but no one big on his resume. So Keith Thurman was going to be a big name on his resume. So Zhu is like coming up and 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 he's you know trying to win a belt. Um, but again, Thurman got hurt. Fedor is a good replacement. Um, but word on the street is like the the winner of this is in line for Terence Crawford. So I mean that that's a big deal. You know so. Tim Zhu, if, if he wins this fight and being in line for a fight against Terrence Crawford, I mean, that's a big deal. Um, and again, Fandora, man, he's he only got one loss and it was an upset to Brian Mendoza. The dude is 6'5". He is huge. If you watch when you, these guys are going to look funny in the ring because uh, Fandora is 6'5", is you know, and Zhu is going to look really small, but Zhu's tough. Could be a good fight. Gonna be a good card. Oh, yeah, man. So another thing we're going to transition to for calling, talking about boxing now is we're going to talk a little bit about the Sweet 16 because I know this is near and dear to your heart because oh, you man. take a day off to watch the tourney as it starts, yes. you know? Yes. You're and, taking days off this time. Hey, but, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but now we're getting down to the Sweet 16. So we do yeah. have some, you know, some some games that are going to be happening today. You have mm -hmm. North Carolina State, you know, which and to State, me, they're kind of the Cinderella right now, right? Yeah, they are. They are 11 seed, the only, the only double digit seed in there. Yeah. yeah they're going to be going up against Marquette at 609. Mm -hmm. I like Marquette, dude, but mm -hmm. something just tells me, man, this little North Carolina State team, yeah. dude, they got what it takes. I think they could get, they could get the upset here. You know, I'm not, man, I love them. it. Yeah, yeah, I love it, man. Any 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 team like that that's in a double digit uh, uh as a double digit seed going into the Sweet 16, they got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? They have nothing to lose, man. So they're going to come out there and do their thing. Um yeah, I love I love March Madness. I I'll tell you what, man. I I've told him Steph this. I love me some March Madness. It goes back to my days when my kids were younger and I would keep them home from school and we'd watch the games the first day and um you know, I made a joke this this year about, you know, my boys are now, you know, mature adults and they have jobs and and my like you you're like yeah like my boys are older they're adults now yeah instead of being at home because they don't get no kids they're in that party mode dad <laughs> yeah totally go all of us today <laughs> to the, that big old watch party. Oh, abs oh yeah 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 absolutely no 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 next year that's the move man that 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 pool uh hey. and that, you know rooftop and watch the Vegas yeah that's the move but um yeah I, yeah i joked around this year and said you know my youngest son had like midterms or something so he couldn't miss school i was like sucks to be y'all you know like I'm, I'm i'm gonna stay home and watch you know but uh, one more y'all go out there dude I'll, I'll probably meet y'all out there dude That's we should we definitely should we definitely should do it next year um hey, but, but yeah uh i'll tell you who screwed me yesterday was arizona man uh, arizona, bro. arizona you know not you know kind of kind of let me down yesterday man you, you um, know there's always going to be yeah. some that's dude he, that one he, i didn't see coming he woke man. up michael madre because she goes to bed really early 
and he was like, I'm gonna message her and tell her that her her damn team screwed me over. Ah. I was like, no, she's asleep. He's like, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Her yeah, her alma mater. She's an Arizona yeah, she's an Arizona grad. Her her, her you know, best one of her best friends. And I was like, wake her up and tell her that her alma mater screwed me. Uh but uh my man right here says SDSU alum, exciting run. Hey, so I'm out in San Diego. Um, um yeah. and uh SDSU people love SDSU out here. Like, like I'm telling you, I was at a bar yesterday. Yeah, there's my man right there. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we follow each other, but we need to follow each other. SDSU alum. Um, I'm out in San Diego, and uh, everybody was watching the SDSU game yesterday here, right? And I, I had a, um, I have UConn winning it all, so I, I can't root against UConn. So I'm sitting there rooting for UConn, and I, I thought I was gonna get jumped, you know, out here in San Diego with all the uh, SDSU fans um, watching. But hey, SDSU man, they made a run. Yes, uh, last year it was amazing, and hey, nothing to be ashamed of this year also. But um, yeah, I'm looking for um, you know, uh, uh, some upsets today. You know, uh, I'm looking for Purdue the Zags, Georgia, dude. The Zags. I'm looking for the Zags. I'm looking for the Zags to knock off Purdue today. Um. A Zags five knocking one, off, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for the Zags to knock off Purdue today. That that would be great. Which um, how do you watch these games? This is the thing, though, man. You have NC State and Marquette happening at six oh nine. Then you yeah. have Gonzaga and Purdue. That's yeah. happening six thirty nine. Now you know why guys have like they're set up, dude, and they have like several TVs. You know, yeah, out in the backyard. Yeah. The wife's like, "What are you doing? Hey, leave me alone." <laughs> you know, and they're drinking yeah. beer. They're like, "I'm watching too," because you could have money. Yeah. On you know like nowadays oh yeah 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 youtube 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 tv has this cool thing where you can have multiple screens you know all in one so that's good um i'll be a a place like buffalo wild wings where you got all the screens you know so that that that, that's what i like to do but um yeah man it's it's fun man um and and it's i'm telling you the first day is crazy because you got games just like boom 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 and the way i try to do it is i just stay home i'll just watch the I watch them in succession, like the ends of the games, you know? So yeah. whatever game's about to end, that's the one I got to watch because it's about to end. And then you just kind of like roll into the next game, you know? The next um, one. Yeah. yeah, but the good thing is, is there'll be a ticker, you know, on, on the top where it'll show yeah. you the scores. But unless there's like another game that's like really close and this game's like a blowout, like I'll go to that one. But um, but yeah, man, uh, uh, I know our boy Tim Gonzalez is a big Duke fan. Duke fan. I'm looking for Duke. I'm looking for Duke to win today also. I'm looking for Duke know, to win man. today, also. So I like Houston in this one, dude. I, think I know, man. Houston's tough. Houston's tough to beat. I picked Duke in the early, in the beginning of my bracket, mm-hmm. so I got, I'm going to roll with them. But watching Houston, man, they they are um, they're they tough. are tough. They're really tough, man. So I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I think Houston probably will win this one. But um, I got Duke in my bracket, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with Duke, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna root for Duke. So one, the um, game of the night to me, Rick. I'm gonna tell you, man. Number three, Creighton versus number two, Tennessee, dude, at nine o'clock. Tonight. That's going to be a big one. That's going to be a big one. Yeah, that's going to be a huge one. And, that's a uh, fight. Yeah, especially in like, I'm, I'm in a bracket with my sons and then I'm one here in my office. And one the only guy that's pretty close to me in my office here, he has Creighton winning it all. So if that Creighton happens. loses, if Creighton loses tonight, then then that's a wrap. But I also yeah. got... <laughs> um, I also got uh, another guy that's got Tennessee. So, you know, it's funny because at this point you start looking at the brackets and you're like, yeah. now I'm not only rooting for my bracket. Now I'm looking for, man, I hope the person who has, you know, Creighton winning it all gets yeah. knocked off because that, that helps me. Right. So it's fun, man. It, it's like, I love, I love March Madness, but yeah, it goes, my sons and I have always like had these brackets, like since they were little. And it's funny because when we first started these brackets, they were like chiquitos, right? And they didn't really know anything. So like I would whoop their ass every year, you know? That only lasted for about two years, you know? Cause and then they started getting a lot better about knowledge than I was. So they started beating me in, in the brackets and stuff. So it was fun, like, um, you know, it's it a good time. Hell yeah, man. But you know, NCAA, this is the time of year everybody gets credit, you know, ready for it. They, they get crazy. Yeah. You, you're 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 locked in. You're watching these games, yeah. but you know the other thing too is this time of year is also important for NBA fans because even though you know I'm a Spurs fan, I still like to see my other teams. You know, because uh, I'm a steward of the game, so it's mm-hmm. important this time of year as well for the NBA because you have these teams that are trying to vie for either playing spots or playoff seating. You know, and that's coming oh, yeah. to the corner, man. So it's mm-hmm. important right now is a perfect time of sports, man, because you got. You know, opening day with with baseball, baseball. just yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I saw you kind of with this tweets, man, about one. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rick, you know, Rick. I love. You baseball. know, I, 
You know, she 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 loves baseball. Um, I, I I'm admittedly not a big baseball fan. Like I'm yeah. really not. You know, I'm just I'm not I'm not a huge baseball fan. Like I, I will fun. watch. You know, yeah. I, so I'm I'm admittedly not like really that into baseball. Run, so, man. what's up? Do we had a good run? <laughs> My love. Um. <laughs> I, I, so yeah. So like I'm not admittedly you know a huge baseball fan, yeah. but um, you know. Yeah, like I'm here out here in San Diego, it's Padres country, man. They love their Padres here. And like yesterday was a crazy, you know, I, I worked close to downtown. So like yeah. everybody was like bumping for Padres. And then um, of course, you know, at Dodger Stadium, you see you see pictures and people up out in LA doing their thing. And of course in Texas, right? Everywhere. I, it's amazing. Like it's cool seeing all that, you know. Um, and I tweeted a picture yesterday of my sons and I when they were little, um, when we went to a Rangers game and it was like on opening day and you know, fathers and sons or daughters, you know, skipping school yeah. going. That's it's cool. It's it's a pastime, you know. Did um you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, so I, you know. On our second date, like I take to kind of I fly, fly her out to LA, right? And you know, and, and we go hey, to the second date, I, yeah. I, 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 right? Yeah, that's how I roll, you know what I'm saying? So we, we go out to the Gadaja Stadium, and um, you know, she's like, Yeah, she's like, uh, you know, you need to wear a Dodger shirt, you know, we're in Dodger Stadium kind of thing, you know. Um, so she buys me a Dodger shirt, you know, and I, I wear it like I went in Rome, like I, I have no, yeah. like I said, I'm not, I'm not a huge baseball fan now. It would be different if it was like, uh, uh, you know, she was like a, you know, a Houston Rockets fan. It was like, hey, wear a Rockets jersey. I'd be like, hell no, like that. That that's a different scenario for me, you know. So I'm not a huge baseball fan, so I'm really fine with whatever. And I'm winning Rome kind of guy. So uh, yeah, so I throw on the Dodger shirt. We had, it was a good time. Dodger Stadium's amazing, man. If you've never been, that's a historic place to watch a game. You know? um, the, yeah, it really is. It really there, is. It's just a hint there, like you, like just everybody there is there. They're yeah, they're all, with the raza. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh oh. LA. Oh LA. Raza, raza, bro. Real talk. You know. I love. Also, obviously, we love our, our our Texas people, but I much love the LA people, man. You know. Yeah, so uh, every, it's a vibe. Yeah. The vibe, even like you want to talk about, like you know, San Antonio doing like their whole culture and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. LA. They amplify it. And look at it. She she loves it, dude. Yeah, I do. It, it, and it's so oh, funny yeah. because like here we are, like on our second date, you know, like I'm like, hey, like if I'm gonna go to Cali to go see you, like I gotta go see my family first. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to Dodgers game. And like at that, like we're still oh no, where do you go? Oh Ricky. Rick Bump. left. Anyways, so we are um I tell him like, yeah, I'm gonna go to Cali. Obviously, I gotta see the water. I need to go, go and to see the beach. my I, yeah. I need to see my family because I have a lot of family there too. And we have to go to a dog. And he was just like, Oh, well, yeah, that's fine. He's like, all manageable. I'll do it, but we're going to do it, whatever you want. Yeah. And, you know, like us still trying to get to know, like we've, we've known each other, you know, that's trying to like get to know each other on that type of level. Like I was still like a little bit more introvert. And as soon as we get to Dodger stadium, like as soon as we're like, getting closer I like i i go into this kid again thing and i'm like there i am like recording and just doing all these things and i'm over here like just in my own little world and whenever we we get there he's like hey you gotta wait for me and i was like oh i do gotta wait for you like I, i'm just <laughs> waiting she, just, she wanted to take off bro she, we get into dodger stadium bro she takes off and there's all the murals and there's all this stuff i've never seen her that way man she was just like on her on one man you know and i was just like, like i'm gonna go put this shirt on he's like where are you gonna be? I'm like, i don't know i'm gonna take off <laughs> yeah. so, you know, i was like he was like well like just just stay around this area please i'm like yeah. okay and yeah. there you go. I love getting lost. I don't mind being, you know, by myself and finding new things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And then I, I know I, the way around Dodger Stadium. So, like, it's it's not a big old if deal. If my wife would have done that to me, she just said, I'm going to take off. and said, that's okay. I'll make new friends. <laughs> <laughs> my man, Hanover Fist. My man, Hanover Fist says, happy Friday, Joe and Fernandez. Happy hey, Friday, man. brother. Happy Friday, brother. <laughs> But no, yeah, but you know, you know what? I res I respect any fandom. You know, I, I really do. Um, I, I was uh, I lived near Boston for for a little bit, right? And I went to Fenway Park. Um, they got I'll tell you, man, right over there. That, man. It, 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 I'll tell you, uh, it was amazing, man. Like I, I'll tell, it was so amazing. I took my sons to Fenway Park. Like, um, that was just like a cr a crazy experience. You know, they were they were. This was like in two thousand nine or something like that. It was a while That's back, but uh, man. um. Yeah, man. Like I said, I, I respect any fandom, man. And um, you know, it, it's 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 all love, but um it's cool seeing those arenas and seeing people, you know, people's fandoms, you know. Um you get swept up in it, you know, it's hard not to. Um, but um yeah. Yeah, I mean it was a really big 
good opening day for a lot of um, <clears throat> our fans. Because here I am, a Dodgers fan, and we took the victory seven to one. And then I saw that the Rangers had like um, what is it? I don't even remember. They won, by the way. I'm real salty whenever it comes to the Rangers. Yeah, they they earn a walk off, <laughs> a four to three walk off mm. in the tenth inning. Mm. Um, and then I believe the Astros won as well. So I mean, both Texas teams win. My Dodgers win. Um, Good opening I, I, day. I get excited for opening day. I get excited for baseball regardless. My my son is also playing baseball, Coach Pitch, and ooh. Let's get into it, Papa, because hey, we're going to be getting some media credentials to cover the the missions games. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That'll be cool. Yeah. So yeah. I was going to throw, uh, probably see if I can throw Shatana Puckett's name in the hat, too. Absolutely. So you can go out there with us and, you know, let's cover the missions games with us. That'll work. Because, I mean, man, you're local, you know, here to San Antonio. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. Our man, Mario Cavazos. Happy Good Friday, Rasa. Oh yeah, man! Yeah. It's good Friday, good Friday, dude. Hey, but before we go ahead and start, you know, bringing the show to an end here because we're already coming up against it, let's go ahead and give a quick shout out to our boy Jeff Garcia of Locked On Spurs. Just hit stop. MCS General Contracting, more than thirty years of combined experience in concrete placement. There. Well, it's not on here. Yeah, you just gotta hit more. Oh, show more. Yeah, show more. It? You see it? It's black and white. This one? Has a picture of Wimby. Okay. Locked on Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast, hosted by Jeff Garcia, the lead Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked on Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at Jeff G Ken's 5 SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow not only on threads and twitter but also on youtube at youtube.com forward slash at locked on spurs this is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the locked on spurs podcast make sure to like subscribe and share yes yeah, so a quick shout out to our boy jeff garcia the locked on spurs podcast make sure you go and follow jeff on at on the x at, at jeff g spurs zone and today let's see what jeff has coming out jeff has some some previews here. It looks like he has a Spurs next preview uh, with our boy Rudy Campos Jr. League. Go ahead and check that out. I just went ahead and retweeted that as well, so you can go ahead and check that out on my X right now. It's uh, at Two Shots Podcast. But Jeff is going to be previewing the game that's going to be coming up. Uh, so go ahead and make sure you like, subscribe, and share also uh, to the YouTube channel. Uh, they have a lot of uh, good content, daily content. Uh, anything and everything that has to do with the San Antonio Spurs. So another thing we're going to do is give a quick shout out to our boy, Chris Leha of MCS General Contracting. Let's go ahead and play that video. MCS General Contracting, more than 30 years of combined experience in concrete placement. They are the best in the business, honest pricing, high quality work. They get going on house foundations, driveways, concrete patio decks. If you want to extend the deck, extend the driveway. If you're a business and you need to put together a slab, a parking lot, or other concrete placement services or sidewalks, reach out to MCS General Contracting at 210-774-9155. They're confident in their skills, so give Chris Leha over at MCS General Contracting a call at 210-774-9155. And thank you for being a sponsor of this show. Yeah, so shout out to our boy. Uh, Christopher Leon with MCS General Contracting. They have the hardest concrete in the business. Diamond hard. Hey, like he diamond likes hard, bro. Diamond hard, baby. And he, <laughs> he's a cool though, dude. So shout out to him. Oh, oh he's, hey, he's he's a real one. For real, man. He's a real one. Hey, my, man, man. My, my man Cavazos, just don't click on Mike's thirsty sites. Oh, yeah. yeah, you got you got you got to you got to erase Mike's uh, history from in there, bro. For you real, know. Man. Every time <laughs> the studio hit that erase button. Hey, but shout out to everybody who wished me a happy birthday yesterday. I couldn't get to yeah because I had a yeah. lot of people telling me happy birthday on the X, on yeah, Insta, on, on Facebook. You know, shout out to yeah, everybody man. who took the time to say happy birthday to me. And the homies that, love, bro. Yeah, and the homies that I invited to come and chill with me on my birthday weekend. You know, and last Saturday we had a little barbecue out here. 
I know that if you would have been in town, man, you would have pulled up too. Yeah, but- man, oh, for real, I would have, man. I'm sorry I missed it, man. I tell you, oh, um, I'm I'm ready to be back in San Antonio so I can be at everything, you know. But no, mm-hmm. man, it, it looked sure. like a good time. Yes, we can. Oh my gosh, hold oh, on. Yeah. I have something really quick to share. Yeah. SAFC just put on their Twitter that Mohamed Abu retires after a storied 14 year career. Yeah. That makes me so sad because yeah. oh, he's so good. 14 years, though. That's a lot of wearing. Man, that is, man. That is a lot, man. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. SFC is also a good time, man. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, well, that's another thing. When when you come back through town, dude, we got to go pull up at, at one of the tailgates and go chill with the homies over there. Man. Oh, bro. Oh, the Nessios, right? Crocketeers. Who yeah. else, babe? All the Lions. I love the Lions. You when Rick all the crew. During this time of the year because we, we still have basketball going on. Now we have SCFC. Yeah. You know, there are yeah. so yeah. many. Hey, hey. So my, I, I'm going to be out there for Fiesta, dog. That's the, that's the plan. So you already know, bro. You, you, you already know it's going down. So Hey, man, we got to go to – I want to go to Bar Gimme Gimme with you all, man. That place looks – Oh, bro. Oh, oh, bro. Shout out to Iron. The, uh, he, he owns Bar Gimme Gimme, man. He's, a, yeah. he's awesome. Um, he, he, that's a vibe. Gimme Gimme is a vibe. Your boy was there, Ataro. Oh, really? He was there recently. Yeah, yeah. Taro was in town, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, he went to Bar Gimme Gimme. And uh, I told him to try those Brussels sprouts, man. Um, you know, you know, Aaron, Aaron's a good dude, man. Uh, if you don't know him or you don't follow him, he's on Twitter. Um, and uh, he owns Gimme Gimme. He owns um, Amor Entero. He's, he's a local business owner in San Antonio. He does a lot, man, for this community. Uh, and he's a good dude, man. He's puro. That dude, he, you know, he's at the Spurs games, man. He's, 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 he's a good dude. Nice. He's a legit good dude, man. But yeah, man, Gimme Gimme is the move. That, that's the spot. Man, definitely the spot to the chefs because oh, oh god. god oh man i'm telling you man those brussels sprouts change your life bro hey, brussels man. sprouts the wings the fries the burgers yeah. so we gotta we gotta <laughs> get the poodle man poodle south time bro poodle. hey the other yeah. place that i want to go to take you guys to when you're in here uh next time rick is they got this uh food truck park man that's out here by mm-hmm. 1604 oh yeah it's okay. like one of the largest ones that they mm-hmm. have here in uh oh let's do it yeah they have their oh, own yeah. bar. They got a stage with live music every weekend, like Fridays and Saturdays. They got live music out there. That sounds like a vibe, man. That's right up. Our, we need to hang you know, out. You know, you know, it's it kills me when I see people that are not from San Antonio talking about like, oh, there's nothing to do in San Antonio, or it's bo- it's a boring city. I'm like, what are you boring. talking about? Like, 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 yeah, like I'm like, you're crazy. Like, bro, you you could just go to Southtown, just that little. Sp- uh, uh, area and, and have a good time, and that's just a, a, a minute, myopic part of San Antonio. You know, like it's wild, man. Every every side has its vibe and it has its thing, man. So um, yeah, there's so much you know to do out there. So, but yeah, I'm de- I'm definitely down, Joe. Hey, we're also gonna have to go and uh, rile up the the crew and go get some coffee, man, from Mudslingers. It'd be badass. Oh yeah, yeah. In the car. We can go with my caddy mm-hmm. if y'all want. <laughs> or, or, or we can all go in, in different vehicles and make it be like a really long line oh, and then be yeah, like, yeah. man, like, oh, we have much singers. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Dang, we'll pull up. Long. We'll pull up. Yeah, definitely hey, pull up. Uh, we'll have everybody there. Yeah. We'll we start walking, honking. <laughs> I, yeah, I like, <laughs> like that. We could that do that. Yeah. yeah. Like, lots of lot, lots lots of good cool cool coffee shops, man. Um, you know, Rosas uh, um, is a spot. It, it's a good yeah. breakfast spot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. New friend, yeah, good little taco truck, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you see, are y'all making me hungry already? We all talk. I know, right? I'm telling you, man. Well, the, the bad part about it is that Rick is just like, man, they're gonna they're they're a 15 minute drive away, and come home, babe. Yeah, she, she's trying to. Try to look at that, man. She wants you to come. Yeah. Home. He's like, hey, I can pull up. Man, I miss I him. Up. Oh, I know. Yeah. I yeah. Oh, I know, man. Because like, she's she's like. Every time Rick, hey man, I'm coming home. I'm coming home, homie. All right, cool. We're gonna do it. <laughs> like right away. He's on my time. Like, on my time. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, trying right. for everybody else, but mm. we got to make sure it yeah. fits within yeah, yeah. my with your schedule. That that's that's the one that you got to watch out for. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah. What we do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what day? Yeah, we you're But but the good thing about Steph is she's down. You know, so yeah. we all we'll get we'll gather, we'll get together, we'll do our thing. So it's it's like um, it. you know she knows all, all the family places though. Like yeah, hey, we're gonna do she, something. She takes the kids and everything. Yeah, absolutely. My my my, my son is extremely outgoing. Makes friends. Little Nessio, I love yes. little Nessio. You know what's funny mm-hmm. is that he was gonna come with me today, 
Um, brought him. I was, and I was like, "Hey, buddy, like you're gonna have to like the, the he knows to be quiet." I got a little stool for the, the only the only thing was that I told him I was like, "You <laughs> do not want to use your phone because he knows like uh. <laughs> whenever whenever he's at home, he can be on the phone." And, <laughs> and he was just like, "You know what? <laughs> the pool is ready to be open." So I was gonna hit you. Oh, there you go. To have a little barbecue. Yeah. We're gonna have the yeah. kids out here. We're gonna just chill. You know, it's gonna be fun. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna oh, tell yeah. you, man. Bring your little boy and everything, you know. All the all the the familia that we're used to, man. Because the thing is, is that part of being a uh, this network, you know, this Alamo City Podcast Network, is it's more than just a network, man. We got a we got a family vibe going on. So when yeah. you, you're part of this network, we're all family, dude. It's like a family unit, man. So we want to hang out with everybody, and it's not just people in the network. People that support us, you know, the biggest supporters that we have. We always giving love to everybody. Shout outs to everybody. Because at the end of the day, we can't be where we're at without the support of the listeners, you know? So, mm-hmm. hey, we're all going to do something up really nice here. Probably with, be, I don't know if we're going to do it before Fiesta or after, because I know everybody's going to be busy getting geared up for Fiesta. Maybe we'll do it after. And we'll just have like a grand opening of the, the pool here and just, you know, invite everybody out, come out, chill out and have fun, man. That's what yeah, it's we'll about. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. Yeah, man. And, and you know what? Time. We're also going to go ahead and wind up giving a, another set of Spurs tickets out. I'm going to go ahead and tr- probably start that today. Uh, and I have something else to give out, too, because we're also going to be giving out an autographed, authenticated autographed uh, Tony Parker uh, photo that I have from one oh, of wow. He donated it to us here. And also, uh, since I went to one of the games uh, with Tony Parker when they went ahead and retired his jersey to the Rafters because he was in, in, inducted into the Hall of Fame. The Spurs, when you went to that game, they gave you the Tony Parker shirts, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give that shirt away with the photo uh, oh, nice. as a prize. And we're also going to give away as another prize the other two tickets with the parking pass so one of our lucky listeners can go out there and enjoy the game. You know? nice. That's awesome, man. That's yeah, awesome. You know, go ahead, and, go ahead, man. What are you going to say? No, no, no. I was just going to say that's awesome that you do that stuff, you know, because I'll tell you, um, sometimes we take things for granted, you know, like, I mean, I've been blessed. I've been so lucky and so blessed in my life. And I've been to a bunch of games and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, there's some people that don't get to go to games or whatnot, you know? So it's like, it's, it's, it's a blessing to like give those out and stuff like that. You know, I know I did that last year where I, I yeah. gave my tickets to a, to a, a, um, a, a father who said he's, he had never taken a Sunday Spurs game before. It was his first time going. Yeah. Um, so I, I gave him my tickets and, and he went and like, they got pulled from the seats to go do high five with Kelton Johnson oh, and all this stuff. Yeah. And it just so happened to be the, the, t- the tickets that I gave to, to him and it was his son's first game. And I told him, I said, you know, I started going to these games away in the nosebleed seats with my sons, you know? So like I have memories of that. So it's, it's awesome to help others create those memories. So. Yeah, man. That's the one thing that I like about giving away these tickets, you know, that I, we, I paid for season tickets and whatnot, you know, giving yeah, yeah. Away to the fans and stuff, because, it's not just giving away tickets. Say you're going to go and watch the game. We're giving a giving away an experience. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, that you can share with either you know their love one of their loved ones. It could either be their son, their daughter, the wife, mm-hmm. their vida, the sancho. It don't matter, man. You're going to go out, <laughs> come out on the kiss cam. <laughs> hey, just, like, hey, hey, hey! You see them on the on the on the, on the, on the cam, bro. They, they come out on the cam, bro, and they, and they gotta they gotta you know do this. You know? Yeah, yeah. We got that Google cam coming. They up. have their arm around yeah. the hyena, you know. Uh, hey, 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 you're just a person I know. They'd be like, they be like, oh, 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 oh. I know. <laughs> Hopefully, we get that win tonight because when we win, we bounce. Oh, I like yeah. that video y'all put up there, man. Yeah. How did you get that one? How did you okay. get that? So, it was on TV. Okay, so it's a funny TV. story. Yeah. The we upgraded our seat, our season ticket seats. Yeah. Because Rick was in town, and we were, you know, just a little bit lower. And right behind us was um, like the Spurs PR people. Yeah. And they were like, oh, hey, like we know you. Um, we started following each other on Instagram and Twitter and all this other stuff. And she was just like, man, she's like, I like your stuff. She's like, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then Rick was standing up and she like taps me on the shoulder. She's like, hey, you need to get up right now. She's like, and just y'all just vibe out. I was like, oh, all right, let's go. And so I'm just there. And it's funny because I always am recording. And I already knew what was happening. So I was like, you know what? I can be a fan for once. I'm not yeah. working. And baby, let's just vibe. And we were just there. And like Rick is on one. I love seeing him at the games. Yeah. I 
I just I I, I everybody loves his vibe. Yeah. And everybody around us too, because like even though he goes, we don't go crazy. He's just, you know, a true fan. And people people just like the energy. Like, you know, like yeah. It's it's just awesome. So she's just like, hey, you need to stand yeah. up right now. Yeah, so so we got up and we're vibing, and that 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 bounce part came out on TV. It, it was it was, <laughs> it was it was it was it was like one of the you know apps or you know whatever. So it came yeah. out on TV, and people started sending it to us like, oh my god, we saw y'all on TV or whatever. So people were sending it to us, and then uh, Steph kind of made it into like a gift, like a, a cut, yeah. cut short yeah. or whatever. So yeah, no, I love that man. I, I it, and I got the I got the Fred's fish shirt on. Right, shout out to our boy Bear County. Bear County. I got the stack of cups. Hey, oh my god, it's it's just it's just oh, the vibe. So yeah, yeah. It's having a good time. <laughs> you know. having a good time. I like that because it's just uh, it, Rick's always saying when we win, we bounce. Exactly, yeah. when we win, we bounce, baby. We've been in the first <laughs> on like ten games in a row, and they finally hey, win. Hey, bro, <laughs> exactly, bro. It's all like, we yeah, win. Yeah. I'm like, oh, all we, exactly. All we do is win, bro. <laughs> I've been saying that for years, man. You know, so that that one stuck. You know, but uh. You know, it's, 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 hey, man, it's just like, a, it's, a, we, we're having a good time, man. You know, we got to celebrate. Life's too short, man, to, to be, yeah. to be, to not be happy and not be having a good time, man. That's yeah. really what it boils down to. So. And even Ethan, his little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my son in, in, uh, in the Vegas Summer League, the Spurs, yeah. uh, uh, Twitter got him kind of doing this thing and they made that into a gift. So that's pretty cool. I that one, you know, like we, we were, yeah. I knew, I knew Rick was gonna come out on TV, so I was recording, and then I was like, "Oh my god, like, it's yeah, yeah, insane. that's dead." Yeah, so yeah, it's funny because that one, my son's standing up, and I'm sitting down, which yeah. is normally the I'm always up, right? But yeah. that time they caught my son standing doing this thing, and I'm just chilling, watching him like vibing, and my other sons are around us. Like, it's that was in Vegas, summer league. That's a good time. So again, man, just blessed, man. You know, yeah. super lucky, super blessed. So. I'm trying to get get there this year. I couldn't go last year because I got too busy. So I'm hoping I can get out there this year. Man, man, I tell any NBA fan, no matter who you're a fan of or what team, NBA Summer League's got to be on your bucket list. Like, that that place is such a vibe. Especially you run into so many people, man. It's such a fun time, bro. And it's in Vegas. Like, Summer League's a vibe. Summer League, yeah, definitely. Especially with Rick. Rick, like, knows all the places to go. And <laughs> oh, I'll, 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 players, coach. You already know, bro. You're a, hey, we, we all, we'll be on a. Oh, man. Where'd he go? No, we lost him we again. Lost him. Oh man, we haven't even talked about, or can we like quickly talk about us scoring? Yeah, bring him back in. Yeah. Um, he lost me. Yeah, our 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 time in Austin. Yeah, talk about your time in Mr. Austin. Oh, that was fun. That was a good time. Yeah. Oh no! Yes. So we were able to go to the G League game. Yeah. And that. Oh man, the rain. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it always it was, rains it was trying to rain on our parade but oh man the best of it and it, it, it's so funny because we know we we know good things are going to happen when it rains on us and we're going to a sporting event because it happened to us in um, atlanta and just rain all the time so we're like you know what let's make the most of this and yeah. let's see what happens and yeah we were um able to go with um with coach i forgot what his twitter handle was we got coach uh, macgyver or something like that coach, yeah um he invited us to go with his group and um we were able to do like a true fan experience i think that they were yeah. knowing yeah there was an, an area where we went to the back and we couldn't um we couldn't have our phones out and we couldn't record the coaches like going in and out and like whoever was there um it did sneak my phone because we did see Papa Vazell in there, no, and yeah. I'm like, gonna yeah. record this because he's not a player, he's not a coach. <laughs> you know, whoever yeah. is. We just couldn't record on this section, um, and then obviously since Rick travels all the time and he everybody likes him, you know, yeah. um, the security Mr. Damien saw us and pointed us out and came up to us and was like, hey, like, what are you guys doing down here? We explained what we we're doing, and he's like, hey, we'll find me when you whenever y'all are done with this, and right before. The game was going to start, you know, the Spurs players come out. Yeah. And, you know, there we are, like, you know, high-fiving them. I'm not because I'm recording. Okay. You know, yeah, <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm just doing my camera making sure <laughs> I get the right uh, yeah. angle. Recording. <laughs> Rick, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I, and I'm still loving it and enjoying every moment. Um, And then afterwards, he does come and find us. And he's like, you, you, follow me. And we're just able to be on the court while they're warming up, like truly warming up, like you yeah. know they're interviewing yeah. them, you know, like the whole video montage that they do. And nobody was messing with us. It was yeah, awesome. It was alive. Yeah. And I was like my my brain was going like a million miles an hour, and I was like, oh my god, like 
I, I know exactly what I need to record. I know what I'm going to record. And this one, he's also, you know, feeling it. He's in his element. Yeah. And I actually got upset with him because I was like, would you stop moving? I am trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like vibing okay. and doing like, my thing. And me. she's trying to record and she's like, yeah. stop moving. Yeah, yeah. I was like, would you stop? I was like, I just need five seconds. Just, just stand there for five seconds. And no, and so I was shout out to Damien and being awesome and trusting us and knowing yeah. that like we're good fans and you know we're loyal. Yeah, we're gonna be positive. But he really did come in solid with helping me get all that content, being able to go live on Instagram and just everything. Like I was like, oh man, this is gonna be great. I can't wait to post everything. I actually have something else in store for Esther, but yeah. It's a it's a gift and it's not ready yet. Ah, oh, there you go. Got a surprise for you, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, always, always, yeah. always we, surprising we, me. We still got like six or eight or ten more weeks until I can give it to him. No, oh, nice. Like that. Mm -hmm. Look at that, dude. You got a surprise. Six to ten. Always, bro. Always, always. Yeah, always. She always keep me on my toes, man. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I have. Like, <laughs> I mean, obviously, like I'm able to record and do everything, and I. I let you guys see what I want y'all to see. Yeah, yeah. And then I have my eyes only. And this one sometimes don't even see the things that I have. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I only, like send it to him. He's like, you're holding out on me. And I was like, yeah, so send me videos and pictures. I'm like, I didn't even know you took that. Like, what the hell? <laughs> it's not ready yet. It's not ready yeah. yet. Yeah. 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 All right, man. We're going to go ahead and bring this show to a close because we're already coming up against it. Um, we got things to do today, too, because it's Good Friday. Everybody's going to have a good time. Spend time with your families. Yeah, Enjoy happy Easter. Weekend. And yeah, happy Easter. I know all the poodles, you know, the Rasa, they're going to be out there, Breckenridge, holding it down oh, they're, right they're, now. They're already sleeping there right now for their spot for know. Sunday. You know, they're, they're already getting, you know. <laughs> They've been out there since Thursday, man. <laughs> Wednesday night, Wednesday night. They go, they go and you know what? I, re I, I, re I do remember that as a kid, I, and I know yeah. we're wrapping up, but I'm saying I remember those brack uh, oh, as kids oh, going yeah. out there, and it was something, man. And like, yeah, trying to get your spot and all that. Like, yeah, it's it's Run a whole all thing, the other little nestles over there, but the whole yep, and, you yep, know, yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. All night Easter's a bit. I feel like I feel like Easter is a big deal in San Antonio. I, I don't know if it's the same out here. I don't really see this. I mean, I may, I don't know. But I know in San Antonio, the whole Tradition, thing, you know. It's, it's but when yeah, you yeah. familiar together, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, we have certain times of the year where the families come together, where you yeah. see everybody. Easter is one of those times where you, you mm. do it big, dude. Especially here, yeah, in Anto, we go buy the Easter outfits, you yeah. know, for the kids and, and all that, and right, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Easter yeah. baskets, you have brisket, beer, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything, yeah. you do it big, yeah. You have the family come over and everything. The yeah. other time too is always during Fiesta, dude. Oh, bro. Yeah, here, yeah. Oh man, I'll tell you, I'm excited to be back in town for Fiesta. We're gonna do it up. We're gonna do it up. We gotta get together and mob it out there. Yeah, we're gonna go to the was it the Hano Explosion in Market Square with uh with Jimenez. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna drag we're gonna drag Jimenez out there. We're gonna drag Jimenez out there and put him out in the in the center of the dance floor. <laughs> Maybe if I could get some boots on him, dude. He wears his oh, boots and he wears God. the jeans, the pressed yeah. jeans with the shirt. He he kind of has that Raulito vibe, bro. Just put on. I'm the telling you, I agree. I agree. That's why I, I yeah, I agree. <laughs> Give it a little shuffle, the Raulito shuffle, bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, a little spin. Yeah, yeah, the little spin on the dummy one. All right, man. We're gonna go ahead and call this a, a show. We appreciate everybody who tuned in today. Appreciate you guys. So until next time, man, we're out. Have a gr yeah. good weekend. We'll see you boys on, on, on Monday. We're out. Appreciate Peace. you guys. Yep. Love you, baby. Bye. Love you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's always going to be um, easy. Just just knowing I didn't I thought you had them all up there. I'm um, at the top yeah. or I mean, you did. I just didn't know I could have pressed the, the, more. the show more. Yeah, so I mean, you're, you're learning everything, but it's easy for you to navigate. And get oh, absolutely. Out, you know? Yeah.
that's the easy one. Now the hard one is learning uh, OBS, mm -hmm. which is the other part that we're using. For now, since we're having Rick join us, I hate that little screen that I have. And then there's another little screen there and all this real estate that's not being used. I like using this when I have guests coming on. Yeah. Because we can all be in the screen at the same time mm -hmm. without a problem. Right. So I mean, that's, that's what we're going to use. But do you want me to, what else do you want me to push? Uh, let's see. Well, I think it's still live. Yeah. No, you go ahead and hit the X. And it, it should end the stream. End it? Yeah, I did.